Let's read educator Olivia once again with another lesson. As I have told in last Friday, today we will learn about the endocrine function of both pituitary gland and the hypothalamus. Do you know that today I have a surprise for you? But wait, I will tell that after the class is over. And one more thing, don't forget to test yourself through the self-assessment test after this video. So now let's start. First of all, I should introduce you the master gland that is the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland is a small pea-sized endocrine gland that plays a major role in regulating different body functions and it is referred to as the body's master gland because it regulates many activities and secretions of other endocrine glands. The pituitary gland is also called as the hypophysis. The weight of the pituitary gland is about 0.5 gram to 1 gram. The diameter of pituitary gland is approximately 1 cm. And the pituitary gland is located in the hypophysial fossa that is the selector sica of the sphenoid bone. In this picture we can see the exact location of the pituitary gland. Now. Let's have a look in the different parts of the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland mainly have two parts. That is the anterior part or the adenohypophysis and the posterior part that is also known as the neurohypophysis. If this is the pituitary gland then this part is the anterior pituitary and this part is known as the posterior pituitary. Now the development of pituitary gland. During gestation period, both the divisions of pituitary glands develop from different sources. Anterior pituitary is ectodermal in origin and arises from Rathke's pouch which is an embryonic upward outpouching from the roof of the primitive oral cavity. And the posterior pituitary is of neuroectodermal in origin and it is formed from a down growth of the diencephalon. So, it's like a coincidence that when fully formed, though both parts have originated independently, but they lie so close together that they are considered as the parts of the same organ and forms the whole structure of the pituitary gland. In this diagrammatic picture, you can see that this is the lumen of diencephalon that shows a down growth. And the Rathke's pouch is showing a upward pouching. Later, both parts almost joins together. And then the whole pituitary gland is ultimately developed. So, what about the anterior pituitary? The anterior pituitary constitutes about 80% of the whole pituitary gland. It is suspended by pituitary stalk connecting the hypothalamus. Anterior pituitary have three parts. That is the pars distalis, pars intermedia and the pars tuberalis. Suppose this is a pituitary gland. So this portion is the pars tuberalis. This pars tuberalis is the most vascular zone and contains many secretory cells. Superficially, it is surrounded by the pituitary stalk. This is the pars distalis that forms the main bulk of the anterior lobe and it is a highly vascular area. And this is the pars intermedia. It is an avascular zone that lies between pars distalis and neurohypophysis. In human, this area is rudimentary, but in lower animals, it forms the intermediate lobe of pituitary. In human, from this pars intermedia, melanocyte stimulating hormone is secreted. That's why MSH is also known as intermediate. Now the histology of adenohypophysis. Adenohypophysis or the anterior pituitary consists of mainly two types of cells. First of all is the chromophobe cells. These cells are agranular cells and stain poorly. These cells form 50% of total cells in anterior pituitary. 
and they are not secretory in nature but at the precursor of chromophyll cells. So the next type is the chromophyll cells. These are granular cells and constitute the rest 50% of the cells of anterior pituitary. The chromophyll cells are further classified as acidophils that constitutes about 35% and the 15% basophils. In the acidophils or alpha cells, the granules are acidophilic in nature and in case of basophils, the granules are basophilic. Acidophils on the other hand are of two types that is the somatotrophs and the lactotrophs and the basophils are again of three types the thyrotrophs, the gonadotrophs and the corticotrophs. These different types of cells secrete different types of hormones like from somatotrophs, somatotropic hormone or growth hormone is secreted, from lactotrophs, prolactin is secreted, from thyrotrophs, thyroid stimulating hormone is secreted, gonadotrophs secretes follicular stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone and ultimately the corticotrophs secretes ACTH and beta LPH. Moving on to the posterior pituitary. The posterior pituitary is the posterior lobe of the whole pituitary. Like anterior pituitary, posterior pituitary also have three parts that is the pars nervosa, infundibular stem and the median amnions. This is the median amnions, this is the infundibular stem and this part is the pars nervosa. The median amnions is the small protrusion from the base of hypothalamus and it is highly vascular. And the infundibular stem is funnel shaped extension arising from the median amnions. And lastly, the pars nervosa that forms the main bulk of neurohypophysis. Now, the histology of the histological characteristics of neurohypophysis. Neurohypophysis consists of pituitocytes, that is, a special type of supporting cells that have long dendritic processes and they are derived from glial cells. And next is the unmyelinated nerve fibers. These nerve fibers come from supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei of the hypothalamus through the pituitary stalk. These carry precursor of posterior pituitary hormones and end as closed terminals near the blood capillaries. Some glial cells like astrocytes and oligodendrocytes are also present in neurohypophysis. And hormones that are secreted from neurohypophysis are ADH and oxytocin. We have seen in earlier classes that hypothalamus and pituitary gland are located adjacently. So definitely there should be some connection between these two. This connection is known as the hypothalamus hypophysial relationship. Hypothalamus controls the anterior pituitary by secreting some releasing and inhibiting hormones that are the neurohormones. These hormones from hypothalamus are transported directly to the anterior pituitary through hypothalamus hypophysial portal vessels. In this picture, you can clearly observe that Hypothalamic releasing hormones after secretion directly travels through the hypophysial portal system and reaches the anterior pituitary. Here it stimulates the anterior pituitary hormone secretion and finally anterior pituitary hormones are secreted. Hypothalamo hypophysial portal system of blood vessels at the base of the brain connects the hypothalamus with anterior pituitary. Its main function is to quickly transport and exchange hormones between the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland. Fibers of arcuate nuclei secreting releasing and inhibiting hormones travel through the infundibulum up to median amnions and the hormones are stored in the nerve terminals. And when hypothalamic neurons are stimulated, the releasing or inhibiting hormones are discharged and from here they are transported down the portal vessels and then reach the specific endocrine target cells in the adenohypophysis where they regulate the secretion of tropic hormones of anterior pituitary. On the other hand, axons of the large neurosecretory cells of the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei of the hypothalamus pass through the infundibular stem and form terminals known as herring bodies. 
Actually, the neurosecretory cells of supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei secrete the ADH and oxytocin, which then travel down to be stored in the nerve terminals at the posterior pituitary. Upon stimulation of the cell bodies, the hormones are released from the axonal terminals of neurohypophysis. Another term is very important in case of the posterior pituitary hormone, that is the neurohypophysins. Neurohypophysins are the binding proteins which transport ADH and oxytocin from hypothalamus to posterior pituitary via hypothalamo-hypophysial tract and store these hormones in posterior pituitary. Neurophysin 1 or oxytocin neurophysin is the binding protein for oxytocin and neurophysin 2 or ADH neurophysin is the binding protein for ADH. So, as a summary, we learned that from hypothalamus releasing and inhibiting hormones like TRH, GHRH or GHIH, CRH, GNRH, PRH, MSHRH are secreted and then it in, they in turn stimulate pituitary hormone secretion. TRH increases TSH secretion, GHRH increases GH secretion but GHIH that is growth hormone inhibiting hormone inhibits GH secretion. Similarly, corticotropic releasing hormone stimulates ACTH secretion, GNRH stimulates LH and FSH secretion, MSHRH stimulates MSH production but MSHIH inhibits MSH production, PRH stimulates prolactin production and PIH inhibits prolactin production. These hormones ultimately influences their target organs. Lastly, the feedback regulation that plays an important part not only in the hypothalamo-pituitary relationship but also the total endocrine system. We have already learned in the first class about the positive feedback control. It is less common and observed in case of oxytocin and prolactin secretion. And the negative feedback control? The negative feedback control loops that govern the hypothalamic pituitary axis include long loop feedback, short loop feedback, and the ultra short loop feedback. The peripheral gland hormone can exert long loop negative feedback control on both the hypothalamus and the anterior lobe of pituitary. And next, the pituitary tropic hormones decrease the secretion of hypophysiotropic hormones, that is the growth hormone releasing hormone and other releasing and inhibiting hormones by the short loop feedback. And the hypophysiotropic hormones may inhibit their own synthesis, their own production via an ultra short loop feedback mechanism. Suppose here the X is a peripheral hormone, XRH is X releasing hormone. XIH means X inhibiting hormone, XTH means X tropic hormones and the red marks denote inhibition and the arrow means stimulation. When the X hormone negatively feeds back the pituitary gland or the hypothalamus then it is the long loop negative feedback and when the hormone secreted from pituitary mainly the tropic hormones feeds back negatively the hypothalamus then it is known as the short loop negative feedback. And when the hypophysial releasing and inhibiting hormones feeds back its own production that is known as the ultra short loop negative feedback. And lastly, when X hormone sent positive impulses to increase its own production, then this is known as the positive feedback control. Now it's time for the disclosure of the surprise. I know that regular classes seems so boring. so. I have decided that from today I will tell you some amazing fun facts that may be not important for your exam purpose but that will definitely grow your interest about every topics. So today's fun fact about pituitary gland and hypothalamus is that by secreting respective hormones, the pituitary gland and hypothalamus controls our mood, behavior and a number of mental and emotional health issues and also our thirst, hunger, even our size, shape and height are regulated directly by pituitary gland and hypothalamus. They also act as the center of human sexuality and reproduction. So next time someone asks what is so special about these tiny glands?
your answer should be everything if you want to learn more amazing and interesting biological facts go and like or follow our facebook page bioholic the link is given in the description box so that's all about today's topic i think now you have prepared to appear in the self assessment tests the link is already given in the description box click on that link and assess how much you have learned today and if you have any doubts and queries please write in the comment below or you can also contact us through mail the short questions short descriptive questions related to this topic is also provided download that and try to solve those remember we are always here to help you so if you feel any problem solving those questions please write to us lastly but not the least don't forget to like share comment and subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon to get all the notifications as early as possible next friday i will discuss the growth hormone and prolactin in details till then goodbye and stay safe